Hey y'all, we're getting ready to finish this design with our fourth and final episode, so stick around. Hey everybody, so this is the fourth episode of a design that we've been creating. Um, uh, feel free to go back and look at the uh, first three episodes. We've been building it slowly, uh, and this will be the last one. We will be completing it in this episode. And uh, just for those of you that um, haven't watched the previous episodes, uh, a lot of this was created by um, folks that went over and joined the Facebook group. Um, they created the color, uh, the locations where it was distributed and manufactured. We even had a little contest to pick the company name. And so today we're going to see it all come to completion. And I also want to remind you, if you like this video, if it helped you out any, please give it a thumbs up. Um, make that little bell ring so you'll know when future episodes come out. And of course, subscribe um, for a lot of other great videos that I'm sure we're going to be having this year. So let's complete the design. Okay, here's where we left off. I did decide after looking at it that I wanted to add a little something on the right side of this design. So I'm gonna take just about everything that we created and reduce the size, but I do wanna keep everything um, centered within itself. So remember this little orange box that I had to um, keep everything centered. I want that to, um, to stay with everything. So basically I'm gonna, um, uh, just make sure all of these parts and pieces uh, as I resize them um, are still centered uh, uh, on top of each other. This um, original 100% natural finest quality, I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I just need to make sure that I um, bunch all of the pieces of that together uh, and then I can um, uh, then I can increase the size. So I have to adjust it a little bit. And it looks pretty good. Um, and then I want to um, go down to the bottom and readjust um, that maybe a little bit lower. And then we'll make a couple of more little adjustments. Now I have to add the name. What is the brand of this product? And so um, in order to get the correct placement uh, of everything, I'm gonna have to make this bigger which means we have to pick the winner. Okay, so here's how it's going down. I'm gonna put Ella, my new puppy, right here. I've got all eight of the suggestions right here. I'm gonna put a little bit of her treats on each one, two treats on each one. The first one that she gets, that's the winner. Let's do this. Look at there, look. Food, food, food. All right, let's go right here. You ready? Go get the food. Go. Well, this isn't coming out quite like I, I thought about it in my head. Hey, look over there. Look over there. Ella, go get him. All right, this is how it's going down. She's going to pick a winner right now. Let's do this. All right, girl. You ready? Pick a winner. Toad suck! Looks like we have a winner. Okay, so this is how much of a winner it is. She actually picked the toad suck paper and has decided to ingest it. Hmm. Okay, so toad suck it is, thanks to Carrie. Uh, we want to go ahead and add this now so that we can um, uh, place everything. Uh, so it looks uh, like it was all meant to be together. And I want this company brand, Toad Suck, to be a little bit larger. So we just have to move everything around a little bit to get uh, this looking good. And then we just need to add Carrie's name. And then we're going to uh, go to Styles. And um, I'm going to use uh, Strokes uh, to get an outline. And we'll use the outline, the color of that paper. Speaking of paper, we need to grab um, our um, paper, stock paper and copy it in back into this program because I want the Toad Suck brand to have that, um, that paper background. So there's probably an easier way. I uh, tried a couple of times to um, use the magic wand and um, I'm just gonna do it this way 
uh, I'm going to duplicate that paper layer for each letter and then just um, use the lasso tool uh, to lasso around um, each letter. And then uh, I can select inverse uh, and it'll delete everything out of that line. So we're doing that with the T in toad. Move it all the way around and then hit inverse and delete and it'll pull everything out. Then what I want to do is I want to just duplicate that layer and I'm going to keep doing the exact same thing through all of the letters until we get to the end. There is an easier way to do this. I could have highlighted the brown um, outside portion of each letter and then use the magic wand tool um, and then inversed and then selected the paper layer and deleted it and it should have worked. Although I'd still have to pull the little insides out. But I did want to show you this is a way um, to um, put background uh, in a picture or an image or even a letter uh, like this. And then I'm going to merge all of those layers together uh, along with the text. So I have one image that I can resize uh, as I see fit. And then I want to make sure everything is aligned. And you know, I think I want the Toad Suck brand a little larger. So we're just going to position this how we think it may look best. It, make sure it carries in there good. And we'll reposition this just a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And um, now what I'm going to do is, uh, the reason I adjusted everything is because I wanted to add um, another image off to the side. So I'm duplicating the original, part of the original design we did, adjusting the size a little bit. And I want the background to be a little bit lighter because I don't want it to compete with our main uh, logo and then we're going to start with some testimonials and you know I had some really great um, uh, Suggestions for names for this so I want to give a shout out to a couple of the people that I could get information on and the first is Scottish settlers would have loved this on the Hector. They would have saved so much on weight That's Bev from Nova Scotia. Of course, this would have been so convenient to carry on the choppers back in the day, but hey, now it's great with brisket. That's John from Texas. Thanks, John, for everything. Way to slap out that liquid and make this easy to transport. Rebecca from Alabama. And of course, I always carry a can just in case I'm stuck on I-285. Saves me every time. Megan from Georgia. I lived in Georgia for a while, so I think that's relevant. I do want to thank everyone for contributing on the Facebook group, not only for this, but for everything else. Anyway, guess what? It's time to let you in on a secret. This can is full of dehydrated water. Okay, it's not the flashiest thing out there, but it's dehydrated and it's water. And the directions probably make a little bit more sense now. So it's time to add some rust to this image and then we will be done. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean out some of the that rust background that I have. I'm going to clean a bunch of it out so that it is easier uh, to read. I want it to look rusty, but I also want to be able to easily tell um, what all the elements are. Not only with the big design areas, but with these small areas, the, uh, the testimonials. If I left some of that out there, it would be a little bit difficult to read. So we just want to clean that up and, um, and then we'll be finished. And then we just want to go into um, all of the, the areas and pull some of that rust out. The smaller or more difficult the text is to read, the more of the rust I like to pull out. I don't want anyone to have to um, uh, try to figure out what it says. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. And that's just about it. You know what? That is it. We are finished. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and select all of the layers that we created. And then I'm going to duplicate those and merge that new set together. So I have one layer that is everything. And then I will go back to each of the individual layers. I'm going to mark them a color, in this case red, and then hide the layer. So if I needed to go back for whatever reason, I would know which of those layers I had used in the final design. 
um, but I'm, I'm hiding them because I have everything in that one um, combined layer. And now that I've got everything in that one combined layer, I can highlight the master template, use the magic wand tool, and then highlight uh, our completed layer, hit delete, and it makes the final design the perfect size for a tumbler. So there you have it. It's done. It's completed our dehydrated water. Okay, so all that's left to do is print it out and, um, and cut out the design. I'm going to show you exactly how I cut my image out because I've had a couple of uh, questions about that. The top and the bottom of the image, I'll cut about a 32nd of an inch of the actual image um, out. And I've measured my template so that I can do it this way and still get a perfect sized um, uh, image on the tumbler. So again, about a 32nd of an inch um, off the top and the bottom. And then I'll go to the, um, I'll go to the right side. And um, this is where I'll get as close as possible making sure to not leave any white. So I'm just trimming right on the line, actually just inside the line uh, here. And then the other side, the, the final side, I'll actually leave a little bit of white. So I'll go up to the edge and then uh, scooch that um, ruler up. And I tell you, this ruler uh, saved me. Uh, uh, I uh, highly recommend it or one like it. So there's our finished design, uh, and then we're going to just wrap it real quick. Um, so my new way of wrapping, um, I've got a little bit more detailed um, video I did a week or two ago, um, but I'll do one piece of tape on the side that's going to be overlapped uh, and then flip it upside down. That assures me all but one time that I've gotten it the right, that I've gotten the design um, uh, upright and then I'll pull pretty tight and get the uh, uh, the center piece of tape taped and then because of that center piece going first when I pull it off after I've uh, sublimated this tumbler it peels back um, both that left piece that I just put on and this piece I'm putting on right now so it makes removing the uh, paper really easy and I do it hot um, so, I know some people wait till it cools, but to me it's a little bit more difficult. And then of course that final, uh, that bottom piece I'll put right in the center so I can um, make sure uh, I'm turning it correctly when I put it in the tumbler press. And then a top piece. And this one, I probably don't need to double wrap um, the edges, but you can see there's a nice little bit of, of space between that so uh, I am going to go ahead and do it the reason I might not the reason I might be able to get away with not double wrapping on this one is because of that rust effect um, it is more forgiving to um, to not having a perfect uh, top bottom or seam for that uh, uh, for that matter so I'll make sure I can get out what I can with my finger and then because we do want this to turn out well, I will go ahead and double wrap the top. Get that second piece of tape. This is the one that I pull crazy tight. And again, I am not pulling the actual paper. I'm pulling right along the edge. Sometimes when I do this, I actually pull over and into the hole a little bit and have to back up because uh, I only want that edge um, uh, pulled tight, not the paper. If I pull the paper, uh, what it'll do is it'll bunch it up. I've had that happen before too. And then we want to do the same thing to the bottom. Put that uh, tape, this wide tape, I think, um, I'll put a link in the description for the wide tape and the neck size down. I think this is 20 and then the 13 mil. I swear by this 20 and I like the 13 uh, mil as well. It does not leave any, um, any burn marks. Um, I've taped on the tumbler itself before. Uh, and that wide tape just really helps out when, um, when wrapping this thing, at least for me. And then we'll do the, um, the second piece and pull it 
crazy tight. And once we have done that, we um, have wrapped our tumbler and all we need to do is put it in the tumbler press and, uh, and we've got a finished product. Dehydrated water, who'd have thought? So that does wrap it up. Um, I printed out two tumblers and um, I did one regular and one matte. And I thought I'd like the matte one better because I often do when it's got a rust look to it. I, but I like both of them uh, equally and differently. However, unfortunately, I didn't think about looking at one before I printed the second one, before I sublimated the second one. So um, I looked at it and realized, remember, I'm not a graphic designer and I applaud people like John um, uh, who subscribes to this uh, channel and helps out quite a lot on the on the Facebook group. Uh, I am not a graphic designer and so um, I don't know what I'm doing. I went and looked at this and thought, you know what, the logo itself should have been a little bit further down and it's really difficult to read these. So this file will be included in the um, in the description. But I did go back in after I completed it and adjusted the file and created this one. And the difference is I lowered the, uh, the main like logo a little bit uh, and I added a, a slight, uh, a slight uh, yellow to the company name. And then I also uh, added, uh, I also changed the color of this text so it would stand out a little bit more. So I, I think I like that one a lot more. Uh, than that one but there are both files uh, this one and this file is in the description as well anyway thanks uh, so much for watching we're going to do more um, uh, series on creating different tumblers um, uh, tumbler designs so certainly uh, certainly if you haven't subscribed subscribe uh, again like i said earlier uh, give it a thumbs up if if you learned anything uh, or if you enjoyed it and of course subscribe uh, and uh, click that little bell so uh, you'll be notified whenever a new video comes out. Um, thanks so much for watching. Happy New Year again. Have a great day. We'll, we'll, we will be blah, 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 so dehydrated. And I am not... Ugh, we will be blah, dehydrated... Dehydrated water. Who'd have thunk?